Hey, Nicole here. Uh, this is the element water now that we're going to talk about. This is our last triplicity. Uh, now, as we've done in the other videos, let's talk a little bit about the Earth first. Our Earth is covered, as you well know, I'm sure. About 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. So we're located on this planet in this kind of perfect little window where we're not too close to the sun like Mercury and Venus where it's just too hot for water to exist and we're not too far from the sun where you have other issues of temperature you, you've got ice caps on Mars but you have the other planets out in the other the other planets where the temperatures aren't allowing water to exist the way it exists here on earth you know as a body of water on, on the, as part of you know the land mass or conjunct the landmass. So anyway, we have kind of this really unique planet, and that's why, you know, as we search for planets, you know, scientists have searched for other planets that are similar to the Earth. Uh, that's typically kind of the first thing they look for. They, they look for the atmosphere, they look to see if there's water, bodies of water like we have here on Earth, so that uh, there could possibly be uh, life that has also been produced on other planets the way it has here. So, uh, at any rate, Something that's interesting is our bodies are also about 70% water, and that's kind of fascinating. It's a little bit of like the correspondence, like as above, so below. Um, astrology, our, our physical bodies in astrology, you see things like this a lot when comparing um, the physical sciences with sort of these esoteric philosophies or sciences. So anyway, water is also uh, the universal solvent. Uh, there's no other liquid known to man that can dissolve more substances than water. You know, you use it, if, if you remember from um, taking chemistry class in school, you use water as a solvent all the time. Uh, and that's why water, it's, it's, it's like its strength is its weakness because because it's such a great solvent, it also can become polluted very easily uh, until it reaches a point where it's like a max saturation point and then it's just, you know, it's done for. And hopefully we will get our acts together as humans and not pollute our planet and end up having, um, obviously if our oceans were totally polluted, we would, everything would fall apart, right? 70% of our, of our, the surface of our earth. It's kind of important. So that being said, um, if you also, if you study uh, like an ocean, like the topography maps for the floor of the ocean, and you, have, I think they're so fascinating, all the trenches, and it's like there's like a whole other world down underneath the ocean, right? And of course, you can't see any of it from the surface. You just see waves and the sky reflecting off the surface and, and whatnot. Um, and the, the secrets of the ocean, it's like she, her secrets are unknowable, right? With just our human eyeballs, we can't see these secrets. Uh, we have to have instrumentation to be able to see what is down there, which I think is, is, is a great metaphor, as you see in a moment, and how this can apply to people who are water science. Now, also, um, water is one of those elements that's very malleable. It can We can freeze it, we can steam it, or make steam with it. We can, you know, have it in its water form. We can make cool little frozen, I don't know, I don't know, you're having like a luau. You make like palm tree shaped ice cubes or something. That might be kind of weird, but whatever. Uh, you can do that with water. You can also put water in a really interesting vase and it's going to make the shape of the vase. Uh, when you make steam from water, you could put it into a shape and it would fill up that shape. It would, right? It's just gonna go to path of least resistance. That's how water works. So uh, kind of a, another, yet again, I think all the elements are so cool how they are so different from one another, the way that they operate. Now, water, um, it's also one of those things that cannot stop moving, right? If it's just sitting there, a body of water is going to evaporate, yeah? And if it evaporates up into the clouds, if there's enough of it, eventually it's going to turn back into liquid and come back down, you know, the cycle that you learned when you were like in the third grade. And so uh, water always has to be moving. It's always changing, always moving. It's always ebbing and flowing, ebbing and flowing. And our oceans literally obviously do this as well. So as metaphor, people who are watery type people, this is the element that rules emotion, or it's the element of emotion, element in astrology, of emotion, soul. And when I say soul, it's not so much from this, maybe your definition of what soul means, um, not that I don't believe in that definition, but it's soul as in kind of that emotional place where we realize we're all connected and we're all part of a oneness. It's kind of that sort of a soul type of a thing. Um, and People who have water, they're naturally more emotional. They're naturally more compassionate. Um, I shouldn't say more. I shouldn't place like a value on it. But they're they're going to go to their emotions. They're going to have value. They're going to place value on things from a from a from an emotional feeling standpoint more so than from a, a logic based standpoint like an air sign would do. Um, 
Sometimes these people, they can be a little bit too malleable though, just like water will fill a vase and go wherever the shape of the vase. Sometimes you have water signs who can, not all, but you'll see this with Pisces in particular, sometimes a lot of Pisces or a lot of Neptune. And if you've got Neptune conjunct your sun, I don't care about the rest of your chart, you're probably gonna be somebody that needs another person to kind of prod you along or to guide you and direct you because you're going to sort of dissolve your ego edges and just kind of go wherever the path of least resistance leads you. Um, so that, that can be problematic. It can be good if you're artistic though. So a lot of Pisces type people are artistic. Um, Obviously, if you're a water sign and you're an emotional sign, you have this ability to see if you yourself are like the ocean with very deep depths, you're able to sort of, well, whether you're projecting it on other people, you sort of assume maybe that other people have these deeper depths and tends to lead, I think, to having greater compassion for people and realizing that everyone has their secrets and their hard things and their fears. And I think water signs are good at seeing that in other people. Um, Another issue with water signs is they can absorb off of other people. They can, you know, if you've got like, you put ice cubes in the freezer and they can absorb the odors in your fridge. You know, if you've got something, I don't know, something garlic or something. So this is the same thing. Water signs can sort of absorb things off of people, which can be problematic because it interferes with their own emotional state, you know. They have a psychic, kind of a psychic thing. Um, now, as far as the individual water signs, we've got Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Cancer is going to be, it's the, it's the sign that rules the mother. Uh, you think of the ocean. Okay, Cancer's ruled by the moon. Cancer is the ocean. Uh, la mer, right? The mother, the ocean. The source from which all life sprang, you know? The ocean is our original womb. You know, the water of the ocean is like the amniotic fluid. Um, so Cancerian type people enjoy nurturing something, whether it's people they love and they literally it's a mother and she like she's got her children she's very mothery mother motherly um or it can be a man too men who have strong cancer in their charts um even though a lot of men who are strong cancer suns or moons are business or they're in business of some kind they're usually very successful which is fascinating but they also it comes from a place of wanting to provide for their family to protect their family or even their own like provide for their own they need security they need to feel safe and so they'll do it through business but anyway um Cancer types also, though, they, they can sometimes, just like with the evaporation issue, you know, they will keep things on lockdown so that there's no evaporation of the water, right, their emotions, but then they can get stagnant and they can get to depressed. So if they don't feel safe, um, then they can become unhealthy. So they need to be in an environment with people they feel safe with so they can take the pot off, the lid off the pot and let the flow of the cycle happen, okay? <laughs> Um, next, we've got Scorpio. Scorpios are, uh, imagine a well. It's summertime, and you have this amazing well. It's super scary, though. You go to the well, you look down, it's like dark. And you're, in a, you're imagining like Disney Fantasia, I don't know, creepy characters in the bottom of the well or something. But you put your bucket down anyway, you bring up the water, and it's this amazing, refreshing, clear, pristine water, okay? This is a Scorpio. So Scorpios are on the surface. They can sometimes be a little intimidating, feel powerful, but it's really because they have very deep depths. And once you're down in there, it's like this pure, I was gonna say pure gold, but I'm mixing metaphors. You know, it's this amazing crystal clear water. Emotionally, they are very pure at heart. When they truly care about somebody, they love them. They're black and white. They either love you or they don't. Basically, <laughs> you're in or you're, you're, in or you're out. Um, and so with a, the with a Scorpio, they're slow to let somebody in because they don't want to be hurt. Once you're in, you're gonna pollute their water source and then that's a problem, okay? Now, but there's another in the I Ching. So if you've ever studied like the Tao, in the I Ching there is one of the, the hexagrams is called Khan. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. K apostrophe A-N. But it's the abysmal and it's um, water, water, you know, water over water. And it's the deep depths. And the abysmal is like this kind of scary, it's your subconscious that your fears, your demons inside of you, right? Kind of having to come face to face with them. This is very scorpionic uh, sort of archetype or symbolism. But once you bring your demons up and you look at them in the light, it's never, it, it's like they just disappear. They evaporate, you know? Like, it's never as bad as you think it's going to be. And you can always get through it and survive. That's also Scorpio. All right, now Pisces is our last water sign. It's the last sign of the zodiac. Pisces, ruled by Neptune. These, I want you to think of these people as the universal solvent, right? So water is our universal solvent and Pisces of all the zodiac. This sign is the most capable of dissolving ego barriers and becoming 
malleable and just blending in with other people or with situations. You see tons of actors and actresses that either have Neptune to their sun or they've got their sun in the 12th house or they're Pisces. Okay, these are all Piscean rule things. And it's this ability to dissolve their own ego and to take on an, a, a glamour because glamour is illusions. They can take on illusion and um, be very successful at something that's like entertainment. It's inter it's, it's, you're, you're, you are literally projecting an illusion onto a screen. So uh, now Pisces type people, they also, because they're able to dissolve their own ego barriers, they want to merge with other people. And they have deep compassion for others. Um, they tend to see other people's everything and just accept them as they are. They see the good in people. A lot of times they, they become martyrs. A lot of Piscean people, or if you've got your son, again, that 12th house, you or your Venus, a tendency to get in relationships where you're getting your ass handed to you all the time and um, you're getting stepped on, but it's like you don't know what else to do because it's the most comfortable place for you to be is serving someone rather than being taken care of kind of a thing. So it's a little bit of self-martyrdom. Um, that's Pisces. That's shadow side. Shadow side with Pisces is also things like escapism, escaping this world, dissolving, like evaporating up into the, I don't know, up into the atmosphere and through addiction, through... Um, anything to do with like fanatical spiritualism where you become like, you know, over the top um, or even just fantasizing, daydreaming, you know, Pisces make incredible artists, incredible writers, fantasy writers. My son has a ton of Pisces in his chart and wow, the things he draws and writes, I'm just like, yeah, a lot happening in your head. So it's pretty fascinating. Pisces, um, also the Pisces is, I, I like to use Jesus as the archetype for Pisces. So it, it is this very much this loving, loving everybody, self-sacrificing energy that you get with the Pisces. They're pretty wonderful. Um, high side of water. Okay, with water signs, we have um, compassion. They're understanding. They're able, if you are just had a crisis, you want a Scorpio. You want a Scorpio best friend because, especially Scorpio moon, they will sit with you and they will walk you through it and they won't run away. Like, they have no problem. The more you ask the more they'll give kind of a thing you know it's very much a water sign they're they're there for people they care about uh they have the ability to be psychic many times and if not psychic you know intuitive whatever you want to call it they're good at seeing patterns in other human beings and um gleaning information from that they're quite sensitive uh emotionally sensitive which is good you know they have the ability to recognize when other people need help uh typically now uh, they can be romantic and they they enjoy helping other people and they enjoy bonding with the people that they love. Now on the shadow side, they can sometimes get taken advantage of by other people because they are so loving and they can see the good a lot of times in people, especially your Pisces and your Cancers can get in situations when there are the submissive, they're the submissive and they're being taken advantage of and hurt. They also can, like I said, they can self-martyr. Um, they can be a little occasionally paranoid or deluded because sometimes those emotional waters, uh, there's no vase, there's no whatever, anything hold, there's no container, and the, the waters are going all over the place and seeping into things, and these things are, these fears are blending in with their own emotions, and they get all deluded and paranoid about stuff that's not even anything they need to worry about, okay? <laughs> that was my best bet, try, my best try at that metaphor. Um, they can also be emotionally manipulative, they can be passive aggressive. All the water signs are feminine signs or feminine energy, which is a receptive energy. Um, and so when you're receptive energy, you're not going to be like, I am so mad at you. Instead, you're going to be like vacuuming really, you are vacuuming that floor like it's never been vacuumed before. Or you are, you know, doing things, you're saying things that are, that are, yeah, you're, you're saying one thing and meaning another, right? Just being passive aggressive. And they can be overly emotive too. They can kind of smother people. Pisces and Cancers, gotta be, and Scorps too, you gotta be careful with your parenting that you don't overly parent and overly smother and helicopter your children. You need to let them fall and skin their knee every now and then, okay? So it's a good thing. So anyway, that's the water signs. Thanks for watching. Bye.